Last time on Master Chef Canada. Come behind you, more chicken. Let's get it on. The top 11 pulled out the stops to hammer out a victory in the first team challenge. The red team. Yeah! Then, in a nerve-wracking pressure test... Look at those moves. We have never seen Reem hustle quite like this before. Kagan lost control. Oh, he just dropped. He just dropped. Crumbling his MasterChef Canada dream. Tonight... Oh, don't just stare at it. Open it up! The top ten square off in a mystery box challenge. I really got to get a move on here. That fires up the action. This is crazy. And secret ingredients come in small packages. What is it? What is it? What is it? Wreaking maximum havoc. I knew it. I knew it. No. I am not ready to go. That sucked. I haven't shown the judges all that I can do yet. I'm in the top freaking 10. Food is my passion. I graduated two years ago in biomedical engineering. So I've only been cooking for two years. I'm feeling so proud. Chef Claudio said, we want to see beyond mathematics. We want to see some creativity. So I am here to play. This is crazy, incredible, exciting. Welcome back, everyone. You are the top 10 home cooks in MasterChef Canada. My mom said that until it's top 10, it's not a big deal. <laughs> you are an inspiration to home cooks across the country. MasterChef Canada fans aspire to cook the way you do. And this next mystery box challenge could get you closer to your fans more than ever. Are you ready to find out what Claudio is talking about? Yes, yes Chef! Chef! On the count of three, lift your boxes! One, two, three, Ooh. It's another box. Oh, don't just stare at it. Open it up! Oh my god. These boxes are from Chef's Plate, the leading meal kit service that delivers to the homes of Canadians so that they can make delicious meals in 30 minutes or less. There's so much stuff. So much stuff. Chef's Plate works directly with farmers and suppliers to deliver the freshest local ingredients. Ah, <laughs> Quebec maple syrup. In front of you there, you have turkey, pork, ground beef, bassa, a beautiful array of produce, including apples, pineapples, avocado, and cheeses. It's like that never-ending hanky that comes out of a magician's pocket. It's crazy, there's so much food in there. The typical chef's plate box contains a chef-inspired recipe, but you're not going to find that in your box today. That's because we want you to design your own MasterChef quality dish with these beautiful ingredients. This is a huge opportunity. Not only will the winner of this mystery box earn a major advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge, their winning recipe will be featured on the chef's plate menu. Wow. Yeah. The opportunity to have my original recipe featured across the country, that's nuts. <laughs> think carefully, home cooks, but more importantly, think fast. Many Canadians don't have all night to make dinner. Your recipe must follow the chef's plate promise to prepare delicious meals quickly. That means you're going to have to make a magnificent MasterChef quality dish in half the usual time. 30 minutes. Wow. At the end of the cook, we'll call up the three most promising dishes for tasting. Are you ready to make the best half hour meal of your lives? Yes, Chef! You better hope so, because your time starts now! Go, Todd, come on, come on. I'm making a nicely spiced pork chop with some roasted fingerling potatoes and apple slaw. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of girl. I'm going to win this today. Cinnamon, coriander. Beautiful. 
we're going to want to think of things that you can do quickly and easily at home. They've got turkey tenderloin that could be roasted off beautifully in the oven. Wonderful vegetables there that could be char-grilled, sautéed, roasted. There's such a great variety of options that you can pull together. It's about making it convenient, but still having great flavor food. Gotta have some heat, but not too hot, not today. I'm gonna go veggie. Some people are vegetarian, so it's good for everyone. I don't have any protein, so I don't have to worry about the cook time on that. It's very stressful to cook in 30 minutes. I usually have a lot more time at home. I'm gonna make a stuffed pork with quinoa and Brussels sprouts to keep it healthy. I'm gonna go for some blackened basa, some quinoa rice salad with a really nice blackened piece of pineapple. This is kind of the stuff that I would eat at home, pretty healthy, but tons of flavors. Michael G. Chef Michael. Tell me what's on the menu. A stuffed pork chop with uh, some apples, some dried figs, and I have some spices in there as well too, a little Parmesan cheese to round it out. How would you feel if people across Canada had the opportunity to try a dish that you invented right here? I would be ecstatic. I think it would be the greatest honor to have people want to try my food and cook my food. This really hits home for me. You know, I'm a student. I don't have a lot of time. Doing mathematics is busy. And you hope you can get all this done in 30 minutes or Definitely. less? You know, I'm a wizard with time, and I'm going to teach people to be a wizard with time at home as well. Well, I love the passion. I love the motivation. Hopefully, I love the dish. Thank you very much, Chef. Delicious. I'm making uh, an Asian-inspired pork taco. At the fire hall, I'm lucky to get 30 minutes in a row of cooking time without hearing the bell go off. 30 minutes, I'm all over it. It's gonna taste unreal. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, you're halfway there. 15 minutes. Hi there, Nadia. Hi, Chef Michael. What are you creating? I am doing an elevated kofta and sog. In my kofta, I have garam masala, chili, garlic, parsley, onion. I have chopped walnuts. Mm. I'm also going to be doing a very rustic green raita. So you are actually tapping into your Pakistani roots here. Every single person I've ever met who has tried Pakistani food is always converted the second they try it. It smells absolutely delicious. Best of luck. Keep on cooking. Thank you. Reem. Yes, Chef. So tell me, what are you making? Basa fish and a quinoa. Today, I decided not to go very creative. You decided not to go creative? Yeah. I just want you guys to love the flavors. Do you think you deserve to be in the top 10 right now? Of course I do. Everyone here is incredible. They have more experience than I do. Doesn't mean that I'm not as good as they are. It just means that I need to work twice as hard and never give up. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Jen. Hi, Chef Alvin. So what are you doing? I'm going to do an Asian-style meatball with a rice noodle done in some stock. I see some bok choy, onions. You're going to cook that with the rice noodles, right? You betcha. So you're doing this Asian-inspired just for me, right? I think a lot of people are intimidated by Asian foods and Asian flavors. It's one of my favorite foods. I never get intimidated by Asian food, Asian <laughs> flavor. I tell you, that is great. Good luck. Thank Good you, luck. Chef Alvin. I appreciate it. You have 10 minutes left. That smells pretty wicked. No pain, no gain. I really got to get a move on here. That would be so cool to get other people to eat. <laughs> Jan, she's doing Asian-style meatball with grilled pineapple and rice noodle. And you know that stock she made for the rice noodle is incredible. I have to ask her for the recipe. Nadia's making a dish from her Pakistani background. Some kofta kebabs. She's having a little bit of yogurt dressing. She's trying to take her traditional roots of Pakistani food and elevate it. My Kofi has got a lot going on. He's doing a beautiful pork taco. So he is making homemade tortilla. The risk with rice noodles is that they cook very quickly and you need to get them out so they stop cooking. No! Oh, Jan just poured her broth down the drain by accident. I dumped out all my broth. Chef Alvin tasted my broth and he loved it and I dumped it down the sink. I want to be sick.
It's a 30-minute mystery box challenge, the shortest in MasterChef Canada history. Taste everything! With a recipe for Chef's Plate meal delivery service on the line. Look, Jan just poured her broth down the drain by accident. No! Just didn't pay attention. Like, why did I do that? This isn't the dish that I wanted to put down, but hopefully my meatballs are good enough to get me through to the top. Two minutes, you have two more minutes left. This is crazy. <laughs> Jonathan, he's starting a sweet potato mash. It's gonna be a sweet potato mess. I think it's a great idea for the dish. I just don't think he has time. One minute, got a plate. Ah, how's this gonna go on? Judges take one final look before selecting the most promising 30-minute meals for Chef's Plate. The winner of this mystery box will also win a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge. The first home cook we'd like to call up tempted us with her sophisticated use of spices. And that home cook is... Nadia. I'm feeling really great. I was hoping that they would see the complexity in my food. I made for you today a uh, kofta, an elevated sog, a chili potato with a raita, which is a common yogurt sauce eaten with Pakistani cuisine. It looks incredible. What inspired this dish? When I opened the box, instantly I just was taken back to things I grew up with. It's beautiful. It looks amazing. Thank you. It's incredible. The flavors are all very distinct. That cumin, that coriander, and that lemon, they're just singing together. It's a standout dish. Great job. Thank you, chef. The spice seasoning in the kofta is? Uh, garam masala, chili powder, coriander, garlic, shallot, parsley. A lot of times when one speaks of spice, some people cringe because they think heat, fiery, hot, uncomfortable to eat. This is aromatic, warm, subtle, long, rich, just beautiful spices. It has heart. I think you could have been more generous and put three koftas on there because I think a good plate of food is like opening your heart to the world. Nicely done, Nadia. Thank you, chef. I feel great to actually be recognized amongst all my peers in this competition that I've done something different. The second home cook we want to call up with an interesting twist on a familiar favorite. And that home cook is... Michael! B. Oh, I, I can't believe it. It's like I'm walking on a cloud right now. When I saw Chef's Plate, it reminded me of home and my family. So I made an Asian-inspired pork taco. I made the tortillas from scratch, which I do at home. Tell me exactly how you marinated the pork. Sambal, maple syrup, soy, some shallots, some garlic, lime juice, a little bit of cinnamon, cumin, and coriander. Your taco game is strong, my friend. That is good. Thank you. Really good. The pineapple, the sambal, that hint of maple syrup, give it that sweet heat that I love. You have a lot of potential. That's really great. Thank you very much. I love the combinations of the pork and the pineapple and the salsa. All that is being binded by this homemade tortilla. And the tortilla is nice and thin. You're someone with a great sense of flavors. However, you just gotta push it a little harder. Yes, sir. It's just such an awesome feeling to know that the judges are impressed with what I'm making. The final home cook we want to call up also used the pork to great advantage. And that home cook is... Michael G. Yes. 
Walking up to the podium just feels so awesome. Like, there is no greater feeling. I'm holding my dish. Like, what an honor. This is such a great feeling. This is a stuffed pork with dried figs, apples, crisp potato, Brussels sprouts, and mixed green salad. I think the plating looks terrific. You've made it look appetizing and appealing. You've added great color. And the pork is cooked beautifully. Just a little rosé color to it, just the way I love it. It's full of flavor. I think the fact that you've stuffed the pork loin just makes it that much more interesting. You've added a sauce that gives us a restaurant quality taste to it. I'd be licking my lips all night long. I think you could have taken that pork loin and pan fry it just on a slightly lower heat. To me, it's got a little bit of drying out on the edges, but small details like that will come with experience. Well done, Michael. Thank you very much. You stuffed it with figs. Is that apple? Yep. It's like a little mosaic. It's marbled. It shows a lot of skill. Thank you very much. There's a lot going on in this plate. You've got the tomatoes here, Brussels sprouts. Some uh, walnuts in there, too. This is amazing. Thank you should be very proud of yourself. 30 minutes, and you pulled this off. Incredible. Thank you very much, Chef. They wanted something that tasted amazing and able to be made by any home cook across Canada. I'm feeling very good about this right now. We need a few moments to figure this out. Pick me. I want the advantage. I want to win this. All three dishes were outstanding for different reasons. I don't actually think that anyone cooks like me. They deserve recognition. This is going to be tough. I'd be happy to have any one of those recipes come in a box to my house. I've been standing in this spot before, but now I want to win. Only one dish can win this challenge, and we want you to know that this was a very close call. In the end, one home cook tipped the scales their way with their beautiful presentation and flavor. And that home cook is Michael G. Hey. 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 Michael G, you have earned some huge advantages in the next elimination challenge. And your winning recipe will be featured on the chef's plate menu so millions of Canadians, coast to coast, can have the ingredients delivered and recreate it at home. Congratulations. Canada's gonna get to try my food. This is so freaking cool. Michael G, come on up here and join us. Mike is looking pretty comfortable up there, almost too comfortable. As the winner of the mystery box, you will not be cooking tonight. As for your next advantage, I believe I have it right here. Isn't it cute? It is. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> What could possibly be in there that would be useful to us? <laughs> Don't let the size fool you. Inside this tiny crate is the remarkably flavorful and versatile ingredient that everyone else will be working with. I bet you're wondering what it is. Definitely. And take a look inside. <laughs> what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it? As you can see, this ingredient can be used in a variety of ways, and we're supplying three versions of it. Fresh, dried, and canned. Your second advantage is that you get to decide who will cook with each type. I can see it with his math brain. He's calculating stuff right now, I can tell. This is a game of chess. In front of me are nine moving pawns. I can play to some of their strengths and weaknesses and maybe throw a few curveballs along the way. Michael G, please hand them out and then head up to the gallery. Thanks, Chef. Professor Mike is completely drunk with power. I'm not playing favorites. I'm not playing friends. I want to know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. I'm just gaining more knowledge on the home cooks I'm competing with. Which one do you want? Uh, let's try the fresh. I think I'm going to give you the dried. Nobody would want a canned item. I know that I'm going to get the canned. Thank you. I think the canned is going to throw you a bit of a curveball. Cool. Hmm. 
Enjoy. Do you get fresh? Thanks, buddy. All right, enjoy your cook, everyone. I can't wait to see how this pans out. Remember, this is an elimination challenge. After we taste all your dishes, at least one of you will be leaving the competition. You will have full access to the pantry and only one hour to create a MasterChef quality dish with the ingredient that you've been assigned. And keep in mind, your mystery ingredient, fresh, dried, or canned, must be the star of the dish. Are you ready to find out what the ingredient is? Yes, yes chef! chef! Head to the pantry, because your time starts... Now! Ooh. It looks like we just stepped into a forest. Yes, yes, yes! Yes! Mushroom. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I see all types of fresh mushrooms. There's king oysters, cremini, there's some beautiful shiitakes. There's everything. I've never even seen these before. Canned mushroom. Okay. Nothing creative is coming to my mind. There's some pros working with dried mushrooms because you can add a lot of flavor to things, but it takes a bit of time to hydrate. I'm grabbing every mushroom in here. That pantry was an absolute treasure trove of mushrooms. So many varieties. Even with the canned mushrooms they had, a good selection to choose from. A lot of people think the canned one would be the biggest disadvantage, but to me, it's not. It retains its texture. You know what? I grew up in a Nufi household, and uh, we had a lot of canned vegetables. There's ways to elevate the flavor. You gotta be creative, but that's how I like to be in the kitchen. All three versions have their own advantages and disadvantages. Fresh sometimes, it's difficult to get the flavors out. And also, the fresh is danger of overcooking or undercooking it. I think dried mushrooms here would give you a bit of an advantage because they pack an incredible earthy flavor. The sauce, it's all going to be in the sauce. I just want the mushrooms to shine. Eugene's got all sorts of equipment happening. I'm sure he's doing this convoluted dish. I'm making a vegetarian mushroom bone marrow. Canned mushrooms are a little bit slimy and a little bit wet, similar to bone marrow where it's fatty and gelatinous. I'm shaping comfy potatoes, similar to bones. My idea is pretty creative. I know that I've got this in the bag. Michael G gave me the dried mushrooms. And once you rehydrate them, you can really put them into just about everything. I am making a pistachio and mushroom crusted pork tenderloin with mushroom parsnip puree and a mushroom frisé salad. Mushroom is going to every single component of my dish. I haven't had a defining moment yet. I think that this is it. I'm going to make a winning dish. I'm really missing home today, so first thing that comes to my mind is a homey dish. I'm making a macaroni with bechamel and mushroom falafel. Mac and bechamel. My baby loves it so much. I want to make mushroom to start with my dish, so I'm doing it two ways. I'm making my spin, an elevated version of my favorite dish that I've ever made, uh, my Salisbury steak. My mom taught me to cook it when I was really young. It's delicious. And with this wicked variety of fresh mushrooms, I'm going to make it the best Salisbury steak anybody's ever had. Oh, that sucked. I'm not going home today. I'm not going home any day. Jonathan, what did you get? Uh, dried mushrooms. Dried mushroom. what are you going to do? Salisbury steak. Jan's is Salisbury steak too, and she's got the fresh mushroom. Do you think that's going to be an advantage? I find that there's a lot of mushroom flavor in dried mushroom, so I think I'm going to have a little bit more mushroom flavor on mine. It's a battle of the Salisbury steak. May the best cook win. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. You have 30 minutes left. So much work to do. I'm doing a cream sauce with beautiful canned mushrooms in them on a bed of charred up cauliflower and then a poached egg as well with that. 
Andy is using a variety of techniques. He is grilling, he is smoking, he is making purees. Interesting for me to know that he does have this in his repertoire. Hey there, Andy. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good about it. I've never done any of these techniques really before, but that's what the MasterChef Kitchen's about, is getting a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Do people from out east uh, like to cook with a smoking gun? <laughs> no, not necessarily. But I feel like I've only cooked about one meal in this kitchen that I've been proud of, and I think this one's going to be one that I'm absolutely proud of. Because I don't think we've seen your full potential yet. I don't think you have either, Chef. Carry on. Thank you, Chef. I'm making a mixed mushroom risotto. It's fresh, it's delicious, and the judges are gonna love it. I'm using warmer spices to complement the earthiness of the mushroom. Nadia. Oh, hello, Chef Claudia. I have made thousands and thousands of risottos in my life. There's a different flavor in there. I added some clove. Why would you put clove in a risotto? I'm doing it my way. I'm not sure about that. Clove, and then a risotto. I really wanted to make sure that whatever I do today, it has a nice, robust flavor. One of you is going home today. I'm aware. Is it going to be you? Nope. 15 minutes, 15 minutes left to present us with your mushroom dish. Look at Eugene. He seems to be taking a long time with those potatoes. We need to get the potato shaped like bones as soon as possible. We've seen him do complicated before, and it just doesn't work out for him. It's taking too long. I won't have time to redo these potatoes. If I don't get the proper structure, I'm screwed. This might end up being his ultimate destruction. The elimination challenge is in full bloom as the home cooks grapple with the fresh, dried, or canned mushrooms assigned to them by Michael G. I'm soaking everything up that I can. Having this opportunity to just observe my fellow competitors is a big advantage for me. I love working with mushrooms. They really are a versatile ingredient. A lot of great dishes are based on mushroom flavors. Whether it's canned, dried, or fresh, it is the absolute star of the show. I'm not sure if the flavors I'm adding are gonna make it the star or hide the flavor and the texture of the mushroom in the dish. It's really tricky. Reem's pan is almost on fire. It is smoking. Sounds like she's struggling. She is struggling. Eugene! Hi, Chef Alvin. You got the canned mushrooms. Is that a bummer? No, I'm very used to canned mushrooms. You know, Chinese cuisine, we <laughs> always get canned mushrooms. I know Chinese cuisine mushrooms. well, OK? And I've used a lot of canned mushrooms in my life. What are you doing with it? So canned mushrooms are a bit wet. They're slimy. So what I'm doing they're about the bone marrow. It's a very similar texture. You are doing bone marrow with mushrooms. Yes, Chef. You can't. <laughs> Can you? Hopefully, when you taste it, it'll blow your mind. I don't know which way it's going to blow. <laughs> That's a problem. I understand that, Chef. Don't disappoint me. Yes, Chef. That's the flavor that I want. Mm -hmm. Marissa. Chef Claudio. So tell me, what are you doing right now? Right now, I'm searing off my pork loin, which is crusted with pistachios and dried mushrooms. I'm also working on a parsnip and mushroom puree that I have boiling right here, getting that ready. That is a really nice broth. Thank you, Chef. And here you have some more mushroom soaking. More mushroom soaking so I can infuse them into every aspect of my dish. I want you to get mushroom in every single bite that you take. I'm going to let you focus. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. Oh, no. Got to put that in. Nadia's with ground clove to her risotto. It's one of those flavors that needs to work in concert with other spices. And right now, all I'm tasting is a lot of heavy, almost medicinal clove. I'm a bit worried for her. We have the battle of the Salisbury steak. We have Jan with the fresh mushroom. And we have Jonathan with the dry mushroom. With the dry, I'm going to hope to see more flavors and the fresh, a bit more texture. Who do you think's winning this? Right now, I think it's Jan. She is cool as a cucumber, and he is sweating bullets. One minute left, and at least one of you is going home. Is Andy going to run out of time? He hasn't even started plating yet. OK, OK, it's coming together. Time is not my friend today. 
with my Salisbury steak just doesn't want to come out. Run out. Good job, baby. It's beautiful. Home cooks, it looks like you've taken the mighty mushroom in some incredibly diverse directions. Andy, please bring up your dish. I was given a tricky ingredient to cook with, and I stood up and delivered. I'm super proud of this dish. What kind of mushrooms were you assigned? I was assigned graciously the canned mushrooms. I decided not to go with any protein and just focus on the mushrooms. So on bottom, I've got a roasted purple cauliflower. On top of that, I smoked an oyster mushroom. And then on top, a roasted creamy sauce using some of the mushrooms and then poached and smoked an egg. The cauliflower is acting like a protein would act on a plate like this. Exactly. I like that. Wow. Looks nice. Incredible flavor, bold, great texture. Honestly, I couldn't tell that it was a canned mushroom by the way you treated it. It's an original dish. You are one to watch. Keep it up. Thanks, Chef will do. I feel like I'm starting to get my swagger in this kitchen. I told the chefs I'm here to compete. Nadia, please bring up your dish. I'm feeling confident because it looks good, and I know it tastes like mushrooms. Mushrooms really were the star. What did you get? I got fresh mushrooms, so I've made a mixed mushroom risotto with a portobello steak mushroom on top. That's a very impressive plate. I love the colors. It's missing balance. You got all that spices there, but you got to balance the spice so you don't get too much of one. This is what food is about, not only taste, but balance. You could have got more mushroom flavor into that dish. Do you think this is elevated to a level of top 10? I was hoping so, but I don't think so now. It is not. Reem, you're up next. I love that I made something from home. I'm hoping the mushroom stands out and it's creative enough to elevate the dish. What did you do with the canned mushrooms? How did they inspire you? I wanted to show my comfort flavors, so I made a mushroom falafel with the bechamel mushroom sauce and the sauteed mushroom in the middle of the mac. We asked you to honor the mushroom. You have a lot of macaroni, and you have one lonely mushroom. This mac and cheese is just flat. It just seems like you got a bit lost. The flavor profile is bland. You're gonna have to do a lot better. It's not the most sophisticated of dishes. I find the mushroom overpowered by some of the other spices and ingredients, so it doesn't shine. When we say an element in a dish has to be the hero of it, we want it to really shine. Thank you, Thank you. I'm worried my dish is too simple for a top 10 competition. Eugene, please bring up your dish. I feel pretty pumped. I think nobody else will be as creative and innovative as I am. And I wanted the dish to look kind of like a forest in fall. The bones I made from a potato confit. The marrow is the star of the dish. I'm actually very disappointed when I look at this dish, Eugene. I'm actually very disappointed when I look at this dish, Eugene. Because I wish I would have thought of it. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Wow. It really is incredibly creative, innovative. Thank you, Chef Claudio. To take a canned mushroom and come up with potatoes and mushrooms pretending to be bone marrow. It's pure genius. Thank you. I know you know it, too, because I can <laughs> see you're filled with emotion right now. Yeah. 
the way it looks, it's a triumph. Thank you, Chef. Let's cut through. I'm very intrigued. Wow, look at that. You mimicked a bone marrow. It's incredible. The mushroom is smooth, incredibly rich, very intense in flavor. The whole dish it just has complete harmony. I love the fact that you've got these chips here that mimic dried leaves. You're definitely onto something. I am so relieved right now. I'm not really thinking of Michael G, but I guess I could thank him because probably I wouldn't have used that idea if it wasn't for the canned mushrooms. Jonathan, please bring your dish up to the front. I'm very proud of my three mushroom sauce. I think I've done a pretty good job in a pretty unique way of presenting comfort food. So I've got a Salisbury steak, and I've got on top an upscale mushroom sauce with some wine and some spices and three different types of mushrooms. That dry mushroom, right? Yes, I did. The steak falls short. It's very plain. Should have added a bit of mushroom in there, more flavor. The only mushroom is a pile right on top. We should have added more mushroom flavor onto the whole dish in general. At the end of the day, there's so much you could have done with that dry mushroom. Jen, you're up next. My mom is going to be ridiculously proud of me that I went for something so homey and comforting. Two home cooks that have chosen Salisbury steak. When I look at this, Jen, I think stodgy, heavy. This may taste amazing, though. So what is the cook that you wanted to achieve? Medium well. I never judge a book by its cover. You cooked the steak to medium well. Looks great. Did you use any salt? Um, I don't believe I did. There's no seasoning in it. Top 10 didn't season the meat. What happened? I was worried about oversalting. You have shiitake mushrooms, which pack a lot of flavor. Nice texture, crispy. This was a good attempt, but it's not your best work. Marissa, please bring up your dish. It looks pretty, it tastes pretty, but that's my opinion. I prepared for you a mushroom and pistachio crusted pork tenderloin with a mushroom and parsnip puree alongside a mushroom frisée salad and a morel mushroom red wine sauce. So you say you crusted the pork tenderloin with, with the black trumpets? Black trumpets and pistachios. And the red wine and morel mushrooms. Pork is terrific. Nicely cooked. The morels are one of my favorite mushrooms. They have an upfront strength and depth of flavor. This is a lovely little dish. Thank you, chef. Nicely done. I cannot contain the smile on my face. We saw so many interesting takes on the versatile mushroom. But unfortunately, at least one of you will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Please excuse us. Sum Dum delivered big time. And even some of our favorites were using the canned variety of mushrooms. That tells me they're able to transform them into something really spectacular. Some of the home cooks were given a real gift when they received fresh mushrooms, and they struggled with them. You know, some people really embrace this challenge. Others, sadly, I think they've hit their limit. It may be time to say goodbye to them. Today, you had a huge variety of mushrooms to work with, and you delivered a wide range of results. But you proved that in the hands of an adept home cook, any of them could yield a MasterChef quality dish. Case in point, the best dish of the night was inspired by the texture of the lowly canned mushroom. Congratulations, Eugene. Yes, I did it. Way to go, buddy. Good work. Eugene, your mushroom bone marrow dish was a dish I'd be proud to serve in my restaurant. Cooking is my life, and having someone validate that, I'm speechless. The second best dish of the night. Also use canned mushroom to great effect. Andy, well done. Thank you.
Good job, Andy. This is wild. It's one of the coolest things ever. And tonight, there was a third home cook who wowed us. Marissa, we're talking about you. Congratulations. All three of you will be team captains in the next team challenge. I'm so proud of myself right now. I'm the team captain in the next team challenge. I'm here to stay. Unfortunately, there were three dishes that failed to meet our expectation. I'm fully expecting the judges to say my name. I'm not ready to go, and I feel like I haven't shown the judges all that I can do yet. Unfortunately, there were three dishes that failed to meet our expectations. And the home cooks that made them are... Reem, Jonathan, and Nadia. Please come to the front. Nobody wants to be in this position, so I'm nervous, quite fearful. Jonathan, please step forward. You started very strong in this competition, but unfortunately, we have to judge you one dish at a time. And today, your dish was... just good enough to keep you in this competition. Please return to your station. Thank you. I don't think that I'm prepared to go home. There's way more that I can show the judges. Reem and Nadia, both of your dishes were disappointing, but in very different ways. Reem, you had to contend with canned mushrooms, arguably the most challenging type. While Nadia, you had the advantage of working with fresh. And we feel that we have no choice but to send home Reem, we're sorry. Your dish just didn't have the ambition or the finesse that we're looking for in this competition. Nadia, please head back to your station. Reem, you delighted us with your Egyptian flavors. And it's hard to believe that you only started cooking two years ago. We will miss your sweet spirit here in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. But we know your husband and baby boy will be so delighted to have you back. Now come on up here and say goodbye. I have learned so much and it's been such an amazing experience, such a great honor to be here. That's beautiful. Nice job, guys. Oh, yeah. The people I've met, the things I've learned, it's the beginning of believing that I can do anything. Wow. Charcoal. It's a beautiful, innovative touch. This is the greatest experience of my life. I'm so happy and grateful. Next time, a dog-friendly team challenge unleashes the chaos. Holy crow, this is insane. Are you ready for donuts? Don't be shy, get up here! And causes the top nine to chase their tails. Look at that. Those ones are not good. Do not use those. Come on. This is no good. No good. Should we start again? This is a critical mistake, and I'm not happy about it.